Our food ministry, our grocery pantry is led by Juan and B. Let's give them a big hand. They have great leaders. People like Angie Ramos show up. People, people, and if I missed your name, I probably shouldn't have said anybody on the secondary tier of that. But thank you guys for reaching people. I, I know about 150 people showed up on the campus to do different things. Like some sought jobs and some got ready for that with clothing and that sort of thing. Some um, got food for their, their family. Some got clothing. Amen. So what an outreach on Saturday. And then besides that, you back up a little bit. Beginning on Wednesday, Juan and B led outreaches for three nights uh, that they used people from Living Faith that brought the firemen, the local house right there by HEB. They brought plenty of food for them to eat dinner. And thank God for them. Significant three meals were done in the love of God. It's all over Facebook and you can see that. What a great outreach uh, church that you are. Amen? Amen. All right. Are you ready for the word? Amen. Let's welcome our first time guests. Come on. <clears throat> we want to welcome our Facebook live audience right now and our YouTube uh, page, right, a channel that's also open right now. And thank God for it at 1230 to be open. And then our website that's projecting right now all the things that we have. We want to invite you to Living Faith Church. If you're online, if you're in the San Antonio area, you'll meet the best people right here at Living Faith. And if you're just checking, just surfing and that sort of thing, that's so great. But we never steal people from churches. We want people to be faithful to their own house and be a blessing to their pastor in the leadership of that house. But this is God's house. And if you don't have a church, this can be your church, right? So we're Living Faith Church. Faith that you can see as we gather, grow, and go. Do you have your message notes? We've asked so much from our usherettes and our ushers. But if you don't have your, ush your message notes, you can raise your hand high and we'll get those to you also. Yes, aer aerobics, amen. These, these ladies are staying fit today, amen. Thank God for you guys that are helping us today. And praise the Lord. If you could also check in on your social media. And, and it's a Living Faith um, essay. That's where you can be found on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And uh, just like our page, share the YouTube message. You can go ahead and copy that and just send it to somebody via text at 1230. You can also share it on Facebook Live. We're spreading the gospel by sharing good news to people this, this year, right? This season. And we're, we're going to believe that this year is going to end strong in the Lord today. Thank God for Name Tag Sunday, right? Even if you're online right now, amen, you can go ahead and type in your name right now. Hit me up and put Bob, amen. We may see it as your, you know, your Facebook thing, but whatever it might be, Ted, whatever, whatever it might be, Mary, and just say, say your name, amen. It's the most important thing that someone will ever hear their name, right? This may pop off during the sermon because I had just trying to stick it on there, but it's going to stay on now, I think, today. Let's pray, amen. Let's pray that the word sticks, <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the reading of your word, Lord. As we open up God's pages, Lord, we have nothing on our own initiative, but what we see our Father doing in heaven. And Lord, we copy heaven coming to earth right now. And would you display it mightily among the people of Living Faith Church, Lord? Would you touch them that their ears are open, Lord? Someone in this room is needing a miracle. I know that. Someone is needing a minor miracle or a major miracle. But, Lord, we all are people in need right now. And we pray by the reading of your word that the answer, our eyes are open. The, the heart, God, is open. Lord, open the eyes of my heart this morning, Lord, that I might hear your word. And we thank God for it today. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. 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 Right now, turn towards that neighbor, right or left, whatever your favorite one is. Look at their name tag and say, hello, Bob, or hello, Sue, amen, there you are. <laughs> tell the second choice, tell the second choice, you know, tell that second choice, did you know I'm God's favorite? And look, point at your, point at your name tag like that, amen. You can do it on screen right now. I'm, you're pointing at me on screen right now. I'm God's favorite. Yes, you are your God's favorite child today. Amen. I don't know how God does it, but he has so many favorite children, right? All right, today, I, I, I still believe. Do you know that Jesus used, he would have used movies and motion pictures if he had them at his disposal? He would have said, hey, it's just kind of like the Matrix, you know, he would have told the audience. It's kind of like Rocky won, amen, when, you know, he fights and beat, beats up Apollo Creed or whatever. Jesus didn't have movies, but he had parables, and he told stories, and he, he got so into it that people were, he left them breathless because he was that powerful of a storyteller today. And I love movies. And so once a year, if not twice a year, we'll do at the movie series. We're going to conclude today with I Still Believe, the story of Jeremy Camp. 
This movie actually launched right when everybody was getting shut in. If you remember, if you don't, it's okay. But about what, a few years ago, we were being shut in and the pandemic was just uh, running rampant, so, so to speak. And, and um, so we, we rented this and we watched it as a family because I remember Andrew came home from Dallas and we were shut down for three weeks or whatever. And so thank God that we were able to watch a movie of such hope and such the goodness of God in spite of suffering. I believe it's what we needed to see at that moment as a culture and as a world and as a nation even today. And I, I want to remind you of the movie today because it's a powerful movie. So in 1999, it's set, not the movie, but the set. They go back in time. And Jeremy Camp is this like aspiring young worship leader. He wants to be a, a man that honors God. He leaves his home in Indiana because he wants to go to the warm climate of California, right? He wants to go there to take college, be part of a, a Christian college. And he meets this girl. It's at love at first sight. Her name's Melissa. And so he spots her at a concert when he's doing like a roadie type thing work. And he, he's challenged. Their relationship's challenged right away. Um, they fall in love and they're about to get married, but they receive some terrible news. She has ovarian cancer. And it's a, just a pathway that they, they're going to follow and take through. Um, Jeremy writes about this in his autobiography, which is still named, I, I, I Still Believe. And I, I think it meets us all here in the room hearing me. Because we still need to believe sometimes when we have doubt. Like I've had doubt. We still need to believe when we say, why God? Why, why did that happen to me? Why, why is it not work? I thought I'd be a little bit further along right now than all this stuff. I thought I'd be in a relationship and nothing's changing and we still need to believe. Uh, we, we might even get our mouth moving where it's wrong. But when it's settled in our heart that no matter what, even in the fourth quarter when there's two minutes, the score is 41 to zero. I'm still going to believe. I still believe today. And that's the message that's written all over this movie. There are three faith powering and lessons that I've learned from this movie today. And they've been, they've been, they've encouraged my faith. And I want to share them with you this morning, if I could. I gave you practically all the answers today. You can follow along. But I want you to still say, I, I still believe. I want you to still be the people that I, I still believe people. We're living faith people, but I still believe. Amen. I'm that person that still believes. And even if you don't really feel like it on the inside, I'm going to act like I made it today. I'm going to act like I'm healed today. I'm going to act like I'm receiving that check in the mail. Amen. On Monday. I'm going to act like I'm encouraged today. Like I, I'm going to act like I'm set free today. Amen. And the very first place that you can really act like you still believe today is when you proclaim something like this. The God of a trillion galaxies knows your name, baby. <laughs> he knows your name. And he still has a destiny for you. That is amazing, man. That's why it's name tag Sunday today. You think I planned this out? The Holy Ghost did a good work in you today. See, God's work is still probably, God's will for your life is still probably a lot bigger than you think it is. Because you're breathing. And you're in the room today with me. And so it's always bigger than you can ever imagine. Who would have thought that from just having a little clothing ministry, doing something on the side like a side hustle ministry, that we'd have a whole building dedicated towards that? It's, it's a lot bigger. It's even bigger than that closet right now, that, big, that, that building that's... It's bigger than that if we put it in God's hands. You're bigger than God, than you would even imagine in your own eyes of what God would have for your calling, your destiny of ministry that you would do today. God's people, we have a creator and he owns us and we do disservice to our God who's our creator when we don't think he can fix us because he wrote the manual on us, Right? And so whatever's wrong with you, because he wrote the owner's manual, the creator of the universe that created you and also created the trillions of stars, he can fix you. We do a disservice to God by saying, no, God can't handle it. No, God can handle it. God made you and everybody else, and he can fix you today. Right, everybody? And, and so we're obligated towards God to that. Isaiah the prophet wrote something so beautiful to us. Um, thousands of years ago, and he calls Israel. And now we're the church. Now it's the church in Israel. The Lord who created you says, do not be afraid. I will save you. And I have called you by name. Amen. There I am. 
He's called you by name, and much more than that. Now, it goes beyond name. Now, you're mine, Mario. You're mine, Michael. You're mine, Um, Sarah. You're mine, Katrina. You're mine. You're mine. You're mine. Right, everybody? God owns you twice. He, uh, He created you. Put the dial in you. Put the heartbeat. Boom. It starts beating. Amen. And then he redeems you. He went and ransomed you. He ransomed his son for your life today. He's called you by name. He owns you twice today. So we know that he can hold us today, that he can care for us, that he can support us today, that he can guard us today. Amen. God's redeemed us today. Amen. The work that he intended for you to have in your life, for him to do through your life, he's going to complete it. He's going to finish it because he started something. God doesn't quit. We sometimes quit if we're real honest. And the Antichrist quits because he's a quitter. The devil quits, but you, you don't, God's not going to quit on you. His love's going to pursue you. Even if you quit, God's still going to love you. All stubborn and hard-headed that you are, God's still going to reach you today. Why should we be afraid, those that know God in this room, that God is looking out for your best interest today? Have faith and shout, I still believe. The God of a trillion galaxies knows your name and he has a destiny for you. God loves you. I wish I could stare at each face today and tell you that God loves you. God loves you. It's powerful to to think of that, that the the creator of the universe would love me. Somebody as insignificant as me today. Whatever fear that I face, whatever fear that you face is small now because God loves you. I'm overshadowed by love today. His banner over me is love today, and I will fear nothing. Jeremy uh, takes Melissa out on this movie on, on the first date, and they find this planetarium that they can visit. And um, he, Melissa, like, just wins a man, love at first sight. And she, she tells Jeremy, there it goes. She tells Jeremy on their first date, God is so infinitely vast. This is his portrait as they look at the stars. We paint with brushes, but God paints with galaxies and the trillion stars. And the trillion stars know, and God knows the trillion stars. He may name them one by one, but he also knows my name. She tells, and Jeremy's like, whoa, I got to marry this girl. <laughs> And I'd like you to watch this clip, amen? No hallelujah? I'm missing the guy that says hallelujah all the time, amen? Hallelujah, he's not here. We need to tell him he missed his point. (laughs) So that, my new friend, is the definition of wonder. Oh, God is so infinitely vast. And this is his painting. We paint with brushes. He paints with a billion stars and a trillion galaxies. And he knows my name. The God of a trillion stars knows my name. And he has a destiny just for me. And I'm gonna figure it out. Someday. see the world and myself in it. What wow, thinking? what a first date, right everybody? Yeah, and the, the Bible continues in our verse, and you haven't had any fun yet, so we're going to read this together in a moment. The Bible calls you his workmanship, and in the Greek culture, workmanship, uh, the Greek word that the Bible was written in Greek first. It, it meant a really a poem. In other words, God's at work with his handy pen and he's writing the story of your life. Even before you were born, the Bible speaks of this accomplishment that God had already written the end of your story for his will in your story. Now, again, we take the pen from God like I have and I write something stupid or I do a, a different chapter. And, and God still redeems that. I know he does, just like he's redeemed all of our lives, right? Look at you. You're in church today. It's week. Amen. Amen. Come on. 
God, God can do a write over. He can give you a new script, a new chapter in your life if you will allow him. But it means surrender. Give him the pen of your life today. Amen. And there's, there's good work that God's planned for you, not, not what you're involved in right now. The Bible says this in Ephesians. Why don't you read it together? The Passion Edition just does something so, so different today uh, in the way they, they translate it. I, I love different versions of the Bible. It, it adds to my reading and it, it will add to your reading too. Ephesians chapter 2.10. Are you ready? Yeah. On three. One, two, three, go. We are his poetry. We become his poetry. A recreation people. Even before we were born, God planned and advanced our destiny. Yeah, you know how how a, an artist will live through his painting. You've heard that, right? It's his masterpiece and he lives through it. He puts pours his life into it. For many of us in this room, we may not be painters. Some of y'all are probably. But, you know, maybe we just work some furniture <laughs> and repurpose uh, it and redo it and uh, uh, probably about maybe five years ago, Irma and I found this chest of upright doors, drawers. We needed it, and we went to the rummage place and found it, and it was kind of beat up and tore up, but Irma noticed the workmanship of it. She noticed the way the drawers were made out of solid wood, and this wasn't just some cheap thing that we, you know, was going to follow. We've had, the, I have had dorm room furniture. I was in a dorm and that thing, the plastic and everything fell apart, but this was solid wood. It was made well, and we saw the backing of it. We checked it out. What a bargain, a hundred bucks we could buy it for, and we knew that it could be something. So we wanted it to match our guest bedroom, and that's more of a, a black furniture type thing. And so she said, can you paint it black? Can you do it? And so there I was, man. I studied some YouTube, and I sanded it down. Wipe on, wipe off, amen. I did all that. Sand off, sand this way. And I was doing it, and I, I had it right there in the middle, and it was just like this big project I had. And and, and, you know, after the third day, I, you know, sanded it down and started painting it the way the color that would match the rest of the furniture in the room. She, I think she got tired because I wasn't showing her attention anymore. <laughs> I was showing this wood object attention and she was saying, that's your baby. She told me, that's your baby, isn't it now? And I just wanted to do it right. Amen. And I repurposed that and it became something recreative in our home. And so every time now I walk by that guest room, I see, which is now our office, amen, <laughs> that, that's become our office. I see something that I did. I lean against it. I know the paint's not going to chip or it's not going to get wiped because I used a special paint that I purchased just for that piece of wood that wouldn't, it would be like, a, it, it, it's something that's nice now. Amen. Double the price. Right. Triple the price if it got sold again. And that's what God does in you. We're all marked up, busted up, and not worth anything. And God refinishes us. And he makes us better. And he puts a new coat of paint on us, right? Amen. Thank God for it. The love of God will save your soul, but it will also change your life. And that's what the love of God does. You're a work of, of art to God. Amen. And aren't you glad he meets you right at you, right where you're at? The rummage sale, secondhand used place, yeah. You were supposed to go firsthand, but you wound up there, almost getting going to get thrown away today. And God lo God's love will always change us right where we're at. Are y'all with me this morning? Yeah. And, and so the second thought is this, amen. I'm moving along. Are we going? Are we going? Are we going today? We, we shouldn't be afraid of expecting miracles. Somebody shout, yes, Lord. I still believe, amen, we should not be afraid of, of, of expect, to expect a miracle today. Jeremy Camp has this boldness, and that's the scene in the movie today where he's singing, and you saw it at the very beginning where he's singing and he pauses because he's so in love with this girl, but they're about to get married. And she says, you know what, she's been diagnosed with ovarian cancer. And there's thousands of people in that auditorium where he's worshiping God and leading music. And he says, could you just pray for her? Could you, could you pray that she's healed? And, and such boldness rises. You think that, that, well, you know, I'm used to that. But do you know that some people don't believe in miracles anymore? They think that that was when Jesus was around or that died out with the apostles. And that's, it's a, it's a theological term. But I'm so glad I believe in miracles. I, I may not get them the way I see them or want them, desire them from God. But God still shows up with a miracle. He, he really does. 
I'm going to need another miracle one day because we're that way. You, you need to realize that. And I'd rather believe in one on this side before I need one than believe one when I'm in the, the, the final stages of it. Do you understand that today? And, and so thank God he, he, he invites the entire stadium to pray for his fiance. And you know what God did? He healed her. <laughs> she received a miracle. She was healed at that moment. They went back and they got married and... It, 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 there was a desperate woman in the same type of condition that Jeremy Camp was in Melissa in the Bible. And she wanted a miracle so desperately because she'd suffered 12 years with this ailment. And it was a burden. She was ceremonially unclean as a Jewish person. And she lived in this, this situation. In Luke's gospel, it tells us, verse 8, the message Bible. And Luke was a doctor, so he exactly knew how to reach and what to write to us in this culture today about doctors and how good they are, but also what they do at times. And in the crowd, there was a woman that who for 12 years had been afflicted with hemorrhagings. And she spent every penny on the doctors. And Luke knew that, how costly doctors would, because he was a doctor. But none were able to help her. And as I notice, here she comes behind Jesus and she's embarrassed. Because she doesn't want to say what she has. And she's ceremonially unclean. She was a Jewish lady. And anybody would be condemned if they were that way in a crowd. But she touches Jesus. She precious, precious through the crowd. And she says, I'm going to, she touches Jesus secretly. She doesn't ask Jesus openly, heal me like the rest of them did. She does it in secret, in a whisper. Heal me, Jesus. And she touches the edge of Jesus' robe right now. Are you all still with me? Amen. And at that very moment, the hemorrhaging stopped. And Jesus said, who touched me? And there is no one that stepped forward, Lord, Peter said. But master, we have crowds of people and they're all around you and dozens who've touched you. Jesus said, no, no, no. Someone touched me. And he knew he was the creator of the universe. He made that woman and he knew how to fix her. But he wanted to prove a lesson. And he said, I felt power coming from me. And the woman realized that she could not remain silent or hidden. And she knelt before, trembling before Jesus. Uh-oh, I did, I did something wrong. There's always a woman that gets in trouble at church, right? Talk too much, say too much. I'm glad Jesus used a woman here. Amen. Irma, start the car. Amen. You're looking at me kind of mean. Amen. No Christmas present for pastor to do. All right. In the front of all the people, she blurted out her story. There she goes, getting dramatic. There she goes, amen. And, and why, why she touched him. And how at the same moment she was healed. And this is what our loving Jesus tells the woman that I still believe faith that she has. She still had, I still believe faith, amen. Daughter, you took a risk. You took, I still believe, trusting, amen. You took a risk and trusted me. Now you're healed and whole. Live well and be blessed, amen. Long live and prosper, right everybody? There, there's a point. I'm sure somebody bumped into Jesus that had a toothache because the crowd was mad. It said, Peter said, man, everybody's bumping. We're trying to get through there. Everybody's bumping. Amen. And this, somebody had a migraine. But somebody in that crowd that was hemorrhaging for 12 years, that when they bumped, they, they, they bumped, they touched Jesus on purpose with faith, believing. We can come to church all the, uh, every Sunday. And it won't transform you. you. You can read the Bible, but if you're not hungry for it and willing to change me, and you're just doing it to get it out of the way. I, I'm talking to people in this room today that when you read and encounter God, when you bump into God, you want something from God. You're after God. You want your, you want your children to change. You want your grandchildren to finally change. You want to be healed. You want to be set free today. Amen. Well, I, I'm kind of embarrassed. I don't want to clap that way for the Lord, you know, for the Lord right now and for him. To, you know, embarrassment is pride. It's just it's it's it drawn up pride right now. And you make yourself more important. than God. No, you give God the glory so he can do something in your life today. And you reach out to God and you're not ashamed to say hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Would you say hallelujah real loud? It hasn't been said in this church in a long time enough to drive. Hallelujah. 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 God meets you in the hallelujah. The hallelujah. Amen. 
And if you really want me to stop preaching, you go, hallelujah. Yeah, hombre. Yeah, hallelujah. <laughs> and I'll get the message, amen, and I'll preach faster today. God, <laughs> yeah, there you are, amen. I knew you're back, amen. You're back, amen. God, God healed Melissa. And then cancer came back in the story. What, Lord? Why? You know, story was going to be like a Hallmark gift card movie, you know. But cancer came back, and it came back even worse. And there was no cure this time. Radiation, chemo, would, and, and she dies in the movie. Because real things happen, not in Hallmark movies, but in real movies of faith, right? And so this is why it leads me to my last point today. Man, I'm going to let you out of here so early, but the last point is this. Amen. Suffering doesn't destroy faith. It redefines it. It refines it. It refines faith. It makes something that was not going to be gold into pure gold or silver. It draws the dross leaves, the junk leaves. When Melissa writes uh, Jeremy while he's asleep next to her while she's going through the, the pain in the hospital room, He's asleep and he's snoring and, and she writes a note because he's such in deep sleep. She's suffering, but she writes him this note and she puts it in his guitar that he'll find later when he breaks it. And she knows that God's going to do something in his life. And after, you know, she dies, he's in this catatonic state. Uh, the dad is, uh, his father has to pick Jeremy off the floor because he's in such grief and carry him out of the hospital. You know, grief isn't beautiful. It's, it can be very ugly, but grief is real. And every one of us in this room, probably if you lived over the age of probably 10 or 12 or even younger than that, you face grief in your life and you process it. And it's a realistic picture on grief and how it looks at us and what we do through it today. There's, um, there's an answer that you can have through grief as you face it today. Jesus describes these two houses, and the first house that he described was built on these uh, sand grains. And I love going to the beach, and when I uh, scoop up sand or mess with building a sand castle or sit in the sand so the waves hit us as we're there on the beach, I notice how coarse sand is. I still marvel at it, and I realize it's still a tiny, tiny little rock. All these little grains of sand are just tiny rocks. And Jesus describes those rocks as sand. And he, he says, you know what? Many of you build your house and you're a Christian. Both of them are believers in this room. Um, in the story he said, you build your house on these tiny grains of sand. And those sands equate symbolically to all these things you go after in life that aren't eternal, that are temporal. They're the passions of this earth. They're the, the lust of the eye, what you want to get out of things and life. And you don't realize that you're building on these tiny little grains of sand that are going to sink and they're going to be washed away when a storm comes today. Then Jesus gives us encouragement. He said, this is the way you should build your life for the rest of your life from this moment forward. He said, Matthew 7, 24, everyone who hears my teaching and applies it is like this life. It's compared to a wise man. You want to be smart. He said he builds his house on an unshakable foundation. The Bible says in other translations, somebody shout rock. It's so one rock, not many rocks. And when the rain fell and the floods came and the fierce winds beat upon that house. See, the storm is coming to everyone in this room. It's, it, it's going to come to every house. But what, what's going to prove it today? The foundation, it stood firm because of the strong, its strong foundation. Do you notice that houses look the same on the outside? You know, but what's on inside is what counts. And the foundation is what's so important, what you don't see when a storm comes, when things come, tribulations and troubles comes to people's life. That's what stands today. When the rains of this earth comes and the storms come and the, the doubt and all the things and sickness comes and suffering comes in our lives, what's going to stand? Are you building on right foundations? Are you building on many, many sands and many opinions today? And so I'm encouraging you to do the right thing today, right, everybody? Suffering doesn't destroy your faith because the winds that blow against us, it's not going to destroy it. It's going to refine us today. It's going to make us stronger today. You put that plant in the wind so it gets stronger, so it grows into the tall tree that it's supposed to be. Yes? yes. And it gets the roots down deep today. Amen? 
Jeremy a camp talks to his father, which, by the way, was a local pastor in the area. And Jeremy talks about all of his disappointments during his grief because he's just like us. Why did God do this? Why did God forsake me? Why did God let my young bride die after we saw the miracle the first time? And why didn't it happen? And he said, Dad, I even prayed for Josh, which is his younger brother, that he would be normal. And he wasn't. And Dad, I prayed for you to be real successful in ministry and your church, and it wasn't. And this is all according to Jeremy's perspective. Because that's our perspective, how sometimes it stinks we don't see through God's eyes that people are successful in spite of handicaps, in spite of the size of the building or the size of the house. Do you understand that today? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and Jeremy uh, tells, uh, you know, his father, I, I'm going to give up, basically. His posture's that way on God. God disappointed me. And his father looks at him and gives him wise counsel. He said, Jeremy, in your life right now, there are going to be prayers that aren't going to be fully answered, but your life can still be full. Amen. You can get them answered the way God answered them, but God is still on the throne and God's still a good God. Yes. And God still answers our prayers today. And so he watches demonstrations of Jeremy's life and he even pulls back a little bit more. He said, you know what, son, I would have died and I would still die for your, your mother, my wife. I, like most men of God in this room, he said, I would have died for both of my sons because that's what a father does. He said, you know what I saw lived out? He said, I saw lived out you dying for your bride. You, you lived for her. You, you did. He said, I'm privileged to see that as a father because I know I raised you right, Jeremy. You caught that from me. And I've had the, the awesome just a privilege of seeing my son live out something that I taught him that I couldn't have taught him, but he caught in my spirit today. Amen. 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 I know you'll find this someday. See, I'm finally letting you read my journal. And I've thought a lot about the day I realized I loved you. Remember? I just watched you there, awestruck by your gift, knowing God would use it someday to touch the world. I felt that day the same way I do now. You're asleep on my shoulder right now. I guess one of the benefits of the pain is that it's hard to sleep. Which means I have a lot of time to think. And I've thought a lot about the stories you love to tell at your concerts. You're so good at it. Ancient stories still relevant and true. In one story, God grants healing. Miracles do happen. Yet to another, his call is to suffer and even die. And I realized something. They both have value. Because each is a chapter in a bigger story. Each is the stroke of a brush on his beautiful canvas. Each is the light of one star helping to form a galaxy. And I think I'm one of those lucky people meant to experience both. 
I had my miracle. It led to the perfect day with you. It was enough. I've learned that suffering doesn't destroy faith. It refines it. And God is worth trusting, even when we can't see. I'm safe in his arms, going bravely into the light with a peace that I can't understand. So do one thing for me, Jeremy Camp, for my sake, for the sake of your gift and everyone meant to hear it. When you're ready, pick up your guitar. God can help you, Jarvis. I don't need your help. I don't need your help. I definitely don't need his. The story of Jeremy Camp is not easy to tell. Uh, But during that process, he's learned how to write music that will touch people's lives. And um, he wrote, I still believe as an anthem that people that needed healing and go through grief and doubt about what they still, through life's difficult circumstances, still can come out through the other side. And the chorus of I Still Believe goes this, which many of you heard it on Air One or K-Love. Because I still believe in your faithfulness. Because I still believe in your truth. Because I still believe in your word, your holy word. Even though I don't steal it, I still believe. When uh, we pray, sometimes we don't get the answer immediately that we want. And sometimes we get the answer that we want. And sometimes... God answers just a different plan or a different, he reveals a, a different way, a pathway that we not, we didn't even realize that was going to be it. We're, we're many testimonies in this room to, to, to attest to that. I know that I've heard your stories, but God, the father, when he hears his child pray, when he hears you pray, how can a good father tell his child? No, especially if they've been acting good. When my son and daughter were bratty, you know, no, no, or time out. You're, you ain't getting anything, amen, until you apologize or till you finally, you know, wash the dishes or do, you know, something. You, you, you ain't going to get what you want. You know, you're no. And, and I'm evil that way, right? <laughs> but God, the Father who's perfect and looks at a child of God that's doing the will of God and trying and, and uh, just living according to the... Per- Here, here's what God does. I know this. He never tells his child no. He says, yes, and it comes immediately. Or he says, yes, but wait. Because you don't see the end like I do. And you need to grow a little bit. Something always like that with with me when I'm waiting on God. Why am I waiting? You just got to wait. But you're going to get it. You'll get it soon. Or the third answer is this. It's yes, but you're not going to believe what I have for you. Because it's a lot better than you asked for. All three are yes. Do you understand that today? Because that's our loving father today. And let's say, (laughs) let's see how many people say amen to this. Suffering is on God's agenda for every believer. Yeah. You can suffer right or you can suffer wrong. And I've, even this past weekend, I've suffered wrong (laughs) on some things that I was feeling in my body that weren't right and I had a way of going but God man I repent because this morning as I studied and got ready for the people of living faith I realized the right way to suffer so in 1 Peter 5 10 yes you will suffer for a short time but after that God will make everything right you will be you will be made strong he will support you he will keep you from falling and he gives, and, and, and he is the God who gives all grace. He chooses you to share his glory in Christ, and the glory will continue. This is the right way to suffer. 
not like woe is me, <laughs> achy, breaky heart, you know, walk. What it means is you suffer right. I won't always be this way. You're going to walk into the room. God's going to touch my life. I won't always be in grief. I'm going to get through this because my brothers and sisters are praying for me. I won't always be in this condition. I'm going to have a glorified body. Amen. See, it's the glory to God. It's the, not your glory because if you go around and you, you're, oh, I'm me, oh, look at me. and That's your glory. And you're going to get about two nickels of that. Amen. But you get the glory of Christ when you finally, and it's complete in your life, total victory. When you're, it gives glory to God. God did that. And I give God the glory. I give God the glory. of, of And I, I'm going to be honored by, by a king, the king eternal today. It's telling me that if I suffer right on this side, right, it's going to bring honor to a king, my king. It's glory, not my glory, but his glory when I reflect Jesus' image right now. Right? It's glory in the immediate right now because it's the presence of God that overtakes me because I'm suffering right. Amen? You went through that? Yes, I went. Nobody knew, but God knew. And that small group knew, but nobody else knew. Amen? And doesn't God deserve all the glory right now? In advance. What you're going through right now, right now at this very moment, if we give God the glory, Lord, I'm going to suffer right. I'm going to go. You're going to refine me today. Amen. Come on. Five second praise break. Ten seconds because we need to go a little bit deeper. Yeah, that one, Lord. That one, Lord. That one. Yeah, take that one, Lord. I want to give you glory. Yes, Lord. God can do great things in your life today. And he's certainly worthy of all our praise. Do you receive God's word? Will you obey God's word? In the name of Jesus, amen. Let's bow and close our eyes. Worship team, would you come quietly, as quietly as you can? Thank you, Father. We still ourselves in the presence of Almighty God. And thank you, Father. I, we, we lift our hands towards you. Would you lift your hands towards your Father that loves you? He wants to reach back towards you. A loving Father loves you right now. We stand in the presence of God, not alone, but lifting towards our loving Heavenly Father that reaches towards you. And as your hands are lifted, the Heavenly Father, God Almighty, the creator of the universe, of a trillion galaxies, knows your name. I put that on you right now. And he has a destiny for you right now. Yes, Lord. Walk out right now, Lord. Even if you could give them a glimpse of greatness, Lord. Uh, the curtain of heaven pull back right now, even on this side of glory, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Heaven's coming to earth, Lord. Give them a plan. Give them a destiny, a purpose. You created each person special from the, the youngest child that we blessed this morning all the way to the very back, Lord, to the most mature person, Lord. Thank you, Father. You still have a plan. You're still on the throne, Lord, today. Thank you, Lord. We shouldn't be afraid right now to expect a miracle. What is it that I can agree with you right now that you need a miracle for? I may not know it specifically, but by the lifting of your hand as a believer in this room, a follower of Jesus, the woman pressed through the crowd. What is it that you're, you're about to bump into? G you're going to press through to get to Jesus right now. Would you lift your hand high if you need a miracle right now? That woman bled for 12 years, instantly was dried because she touched Jesus can touch you right now. Thank you for the miracle of faith right now. Those on screen, you're lifting your hand too. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. A miracle walked in the room, Lord, a moment ago. It's evident, Lord, you're still at work. Thank you, Lord. Welcome home, Jesus would tell. Welcome to my house. Welcome to the house of the Lord today. In my house, there's miracles. In my house, there's a stirring. The water's beginning to stir the angel right now. And you don't even need to get to it by, by somebody helping you. God is coming. Jesus is coming right to you. And he's touching you at this very moment today. Oh, the ministry, the Holy Spirit is here. The Holy Spirit's strong in this room right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You're touching hearts today. You're blessing people. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. You may have been suffering for a season, but it's not going to destroy your faith. It's going to make you stronger right now. I just encourage you in that. And if it doesn't, 
kills you, it makes you stronger. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. And you're not dead, you're breathing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Even if you were to die, you win because you go to heaven. Amen. And you're healed finally there. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The destiny that you have in God as your hands come down right now as I make a final prayer is this. The destiny that God has planned for your life today, the one that knows all the stars, of course he knows your name. And God's going to love you no matter what. But you need to receive his love. God owns it all. And in order for him to have that destiny, that purpose in your life that you've so longed for and you've tried in those little grains of sand that just sink in your life, so man, you got to build it on the rock. And that means ownership. That just means that God needs to own you. you he needs to take over your life today. And so I don't want to really play at this moment, but I want people that are saying, I, I'm a sinner. I, I need a savior. And if you try to pay for your sins, it, it, it's, it takes it's hell. It's an eternity of hell, and you don't want to pay that, especially as I'm giving you good news right now. And the good news is that Jesus can save you from your sins, and he can give you a new life in this moment today. And so if that's you right now, just the, the, the Holy Spirit's probably, would you just stand up right now and just say, Jesus, save me from my sins? You need to be that bold in this room. Amen. Come on. I'm clapping for those that are standing right now. Jesus, save me from my sins. You're, you're already my brothers and sisters, and we don't need to look around because this is a moment. You're my brother and sister right now by standing. We pray this prayer together. Now let's stand with them because we're, we're family. You don't pray alone. You saw them stand, and you're praying with them right now. We pray this together. Heavenly Father, meet me right where I'm at. Forgive me of all my sins. Wash me clean, Jesus. Your blood. Your death on the cross cross saved me, delivered me, me, redeemed me, purchased me again. Thank you that I can dream the dream of God again. From this moment forward, forward, I walk in the destiny, destiny, in the purpose of God for my life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Let's celebrate with them right now a new life and living faith. Amen and amen. If you can remain standing, if, if you need to rest your body, I totally understand. I, I want to just bring the, we need to finish right now the service. Um, I really don't have anything else to say, but let's receive the tithe and offering. The church isn't after your money. Um, it's not, amen, amen. Uh, you know, my sister clapped, not the because, hey, the church isn't after our money, amen. <laughs> but she clapped because she's a generous giver. And it's demonstrated. So I'm going to let the rest of y'all catch up with her right now because she's let. Yes, Lord. Generosity reigns in this house. Uh, One day, Lord, we will reach people uh, even beyond our mission reach. Lord, we will reach many, many people. Lord, we we won't be able to count them as a hundred that many. Thank God for the hundred that showed up, Lord, yesterday and the ones that we fed this week. But thank you, Jesus, that it will become as vast, Lord, as we won't be able to count the stars of how many people that we're reaching on a weekly basis because of the generosity and the foundation that we have right now in this house today. So bless the tithe and the offering, Lord. There there are the ways to give. Thank you, Lord. We, We thank you, God, for every giver in this room. Thank you, God, for generosity reigning. We say this over your life today. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his countenance towards you. And may the Lord give you his peace. Amen. We sing unto the Lord. Amen. As we give. God God bless you. Amen. We will sing, sing, sing. And make music with.